Okay, so we're going to attack this related rates problem. If you want, pause the video and read it. Basically, I know this is a related rates problem because as I read it, I noticed that I was given rates and I was asked to find a rate. So it lets me know it's a related rates problem. I get in the correct mindset. One of the first things I like to do when doing a related rates problem is draw a picture of the situation. So we're talking about a cone-shaped filter. So I do my best to draw a cone. I'll go ahead and do that over here. There's liquid in this cone. Let me go ahead and draw some liquid in the cone. And not that it's 100% necessary, but maybe I'll just use this little draw feature here and get some water going in there. So there we go. So there is my liquid in my cone. Uh, commonly referred to as a cone within a cone problem for obvious reasons. You have the blue cone inside the black cone. So now what do I want to do with the picture? Well, I got to label it. What do I know? Well, I reread the problem. I see 16. 16 represents the height of this cone. I also see 4 over here. That represents the base of the cone. Now you'll notice I'm labeling these values with constants and for me that's okay because they're constant throughout the problem. So in other words, as the liquid is flowing out of this cone, the cone-shaped filter is not changing, so it's okay to label them 4 and 16. Now, what else do I know? Well, there's some other things going on. The liquid is flowing out of the cone. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label this H. Now, notice I labeled it with the variable. I could have, I guess, labeled it A, but I would argue that that's probably not a good idea. And the reason being is the height isn't always 8. It's only 8 at a snapshot in time. So my rule of thumb is if anything in the picture is changing, I'm going to want to label that with a variable designation. So since the liquid is flowing out, I'm going to call this H. Likewise, I'm going to call this R because that is also changing as the liquid is flowing out. In fact, both R and H are decreasing. Now, to be honest with you, I probably should call R R of T and I probably should call H H of T. Reason being is they both would be functions of time which should make sense because as time goes on their quantities are going to change so depending on the time will depend on what the height and the radius of the liquid is but stylistic concerns or reasons I should say I'm not going to call them R of T and H of T I'm going to call them R and H but understand that they really do represent functions of time so I got my picture anything that's changing has been labeled with a function I'm good to go so now I want to write down what rates do I know and what rates do I want to find. Well, if I reread the problem, all right, I will see that there is a rate that I know, and I underlined it before. This right here is a rate. Unit per time is a dead giveaway, but it also says rate. So what rate is that? Well, it turns out that is dv dt. So dv dt is going to be 2 cubic inches per minute. Now, how do I know it's dv dt and not dh dt? Well, for a couple of reasons. First off, liquid occupies volume. So it says liquid is flowing out. So to me, that's volume. But even if you didn't pick up on that, just take a look at the unit. It's cubic inches per minute. Cubic inches is a volume unit. So honestly, that, that gives it away right there. Now, there's a couple of things that I should probably clean up here to make this mathematically sound. It tells me that liquid is flowing out of the cone at a rate of 2 cubic inches per minute specifically when the level is 8 inches deep. So I should really write here evaluated when h equals 8. The other thing that I want to pay attention to with rates is well, are they positive or are they negative? Well it turns out this rate would be negative. Now it doesn't tell me anywhere in the problem that it's negative but I know it's negative because liquid is flowing out of the cone. So the volume of the liquid in the cone is decreasing so that means its rate, its derivative should be negative. Right, so we want to pick up on that. That's kind of important. So that's really the only rate I know. So I reread the problem. I say, all right, well, what rate or rates do I want to find? Well, if I read the last sentence, it says, how fast is the depth of the liquid decreasing at that instance? So it basically wants to find, or we want to find, dh dt at the instant h equals 8, at that snapshot in time. So I got my picture. I got my no. I got my find. Now i got to come up with an equation that relates all of these variables. Well, we're talking about volume of a cone. So lucky for me, I know the volume of a cone formula. Volume equals one-third pi r squared h. It's basically one-third the volume of a right circular cylinder. It's an easy way to remember. 
So now what do I want to do with this equation? Well, I'm going to want to take the derivative of this equation, but there's a little bit of an issue with that. If I take the derivative right now, you'll notice that I have two functions over here, r and h. So that means I'm going to have to use the product rule, because I have a product, which that's not really the issue. I can do that. But notice that when I do use the product rule, I would have a dr dt and a dh dt that I get. And that would mean I would have two unknowns. And that's a problem. I don't want two unknowns. Now, if they would have given me dr dt, it wouldn't have been a problem, but they did not. So I need to somehow get r in terms of h or h in terms of r. And there's a standard little te technical thing to do when you're talking about a cone within a cone problem. So let's take a look here. If I look at a little triangular cross section right here, take a look at that triangle, and I'll pull it out so it's easy for us to see. And I also want to look at the triangular cross section of the liquid right there. So I'm going to pull out that triangle as well. So I'm going to label these triangles with basically what I've already labeled. This was 16, this was 4, this was H, this is R. What do I know about these two triangles? Well, they share this angle here. This angle for both of them would be a right angle, which means the third angle of both triangles would have to be congruent. So the three angles in this triangle are congruent to the three angles in that triangle. That means the triangles are similar, which means the sides are in proportion. So I can say then that 4 over 16 equals r over h. Now to solve this, cross multiply, multiply by reciprocals, however you want to think about it. I'm going to get 16r equals 4h. Divide by 16, I get r equals 4 over 16h, or r equals 1 fourth h. So I now have r in terms of h. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to here and substitute that in. And this way I won't have two functions or two variables. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I come up here, recall that r is 1 fourth h. So r is 1 fourth h. So I'm going to get volume equals 1 third pi r squared h. But remember, I just went ahead and solved r is 1 fourth h. So I should clean this up. Common mistake, people take the derivative of this right now. And honestly, to me, that's insanity. You know, clean this up before you go ahead and take the derivative. So in other words, order of operations. Square the 1 fourth and the h, you get 1 16th h squared. Multiply by a third, you're going to get 1 over 48 pi Again, h squared times h is h cubed. I now have a nice little volume equation for the liquid in the cone in terms of one variable. I now can go ahead and take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. Remember, t is time. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, and I'm going to treat v and h as functions of time, because again, they are. As time goes on, they change. Now, the reason why it's important to distinguish that is because when I take the derivative of these functions, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. Now, this video is about the cone within a cone problem, so I'm not going to get into the chain rule. But basic gist is this. If I was to take the derivative of v with respect to v, I would just get 1. But if I'm going to take the derivative of v with respect to t, where v is a function of time, I'm going to get 1 dv dt. Same thing over here. If I was to take the derivative of this with respect to h, right, 1 over 48 pi, that's just one big constant, I would get 3 times 1 over 48 pi h squared. But if I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to time, where h is a function of time, I get 3 times 1 over 48 pi, which would basically be 1 over 16 pi h squared, but then times dh dt. And that's coming from the chain rule. So here you go. So you have an equation, right? There's an equal sign. And I have rates in it, so there's my related rates equation. No magic there. The rest really is a walk in the park. At this point, we're going to chuck in what we know, and we're going to solve for what we don't know. So we know dv dt is negative 2, so that goes in. I know that h, at the snapshot in time that I'm interested in, is 8. So I plug the 8 in there. And now, because I plug the 8 in there, this dh dt has to change from dh dt to dh dt when h equals 8. Now, I just want to bring light to just one more point, which I've already hit on, but I'm going to do it again. Some people say, well, why didn't you just plug in 8 right here? Right from the get-go, plug in 8. You can't do that. If I was to plug in 8 right here, right, right up here in the very beginning, that would mean 
that throughout the problem, H was constant. In other words, the height of the liquid always remained at 8. And it doesn't. It's actually decreasing. That's part of the reason why I want you to label this with a variable and not 8. Just to kind of, you know, strike home that idea. Uh, you say, well, why can you plug it in here? Well, I can plug it in here because I've already taken the derivative of this equation. I already have my related rates equation. And in effect, when I plug in the 8 now, it's getting me a snapshot in time. Almost like if I was watching the liquid flow out of this cone, and when the height was instantly 8, if I was to take a picture of it, that would be the instant that we're talking about. And I'll go back to that in a second. So anyway, let's clean this up. 8 squared is 64 divided by 16 is 4. I'm going to get negative 2 equals 4 pi times dh dt when h equals 8. Come back up here. So now if I divide both sides by 4 pi, I get negative 2 over 4 pi equals dh dt when h equals 8. And then just to clean this up a little bit, not that you have to switch sides, I'm going to switch the sides here. Divide both sides, uh, divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. So I get negative 1 over 2 pi. And that would be my uh, basic answer. It's actually dHtt. It's my rate. Now let's just talk about this for a second. Units are huge in related rates problems. So what would the unit be for dHtt? Well, some teachers will have you plug the units in as you go. And then you kind of work out the dimensional analysis. Uh, I would prefer not to do that. I think it's a great thing to do occasionally. Uh, for learning purposes, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I actually want you to interpret the derivative, and I think you should be able to get the unit that way. So in other words, what's my derivative? It's dh dt. Well, what's h measured in? h is height. It's measured in inches. So I'm going to know for a fact it's going to be inches per. It's not square inches. It's not cubic inches. It's inches per. Now, inches per what? Well, t, right? It's the h dt. T is measured in time, in minutes, so it's minutes. And so I get inches per minute. So that's going to be my dh dt. A couple things. First off, notice my rate is negative. Well, that should make sense to you. Now, why does it make sense? Well, because as liquid's flowing out of the cone, h is decreasing. So it makes sense that its rate or its derivative is negative. All right, so that's kind of an, uh, an important th distinction. Now, if you read the question, it says, how fast is the depth of the liquid decreasing at that instant? So you probably should say the depth of the liquid is decreasing at a rate of 1 over 2 pi inches per minute. All right, so you notice how I didn't say the negative. The rate is, in fact, negative. dHtt equals negative 1 over 2 pi inches per minute. Just be careful with how the question is, is worded when you, when you give your answer. Well, I hope this helps for the cone within a cone problem.